present. Thank you, Ellie. I would like Jack Brenton to come and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Jack. Okay, Mr. Emmett, are there any staff or student recognition this evening? Yeah, Mrs. Granado, I uh, don't have him here in the audience, but I'd certainly like to uh, give him a shout out, and that is uh, Mr. John Babel. Uh, John Babel is one of our bus drivers um, for the Weathersfield Public Schools. He drives one of our big uh, athletic buses. On Saturday, our girls' swim team was down at Yale, and uh, we had a situation where our bus company failed to provide a bus uh, to bring them back. Uh, Mr. Babel gave up his evening plans and got to the bus yard, got on that bus, and got down and made sure that all those uh, young ladies got home safe and sound. So I <laughs> definitely want to give a uh, uh, word of appreciation to Mr. John Babel. Great. Thank you. Moving on. Next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of a special Board of Ed meeting on October 18, 2016. Are there any corrections? Corrections. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Those minutes are approved. We continue with um, the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on October 25th, 2016. Um, are there any corrections? So moved without corrections. Okay. Is there a second out there? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Those minutes are also approved. And finally, another approval of minutes. This is for the special Board of Ed meeting on November 1st, 2016. Are there any corrections? Make a motion. Okay. Make it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? then those minutes are also approved. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Hello, my name is Dan O'Connor, 49 Broad Street. Before I actually start my comments, I would like to thank all of you for your service. Uh, I know a little of what it's like to sit behind that council. All those chambers so much nicer than it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> of course, John Cassio and uh, John Morris, you guys are still here. <laughs> but um, I do appreciate your service. I know when Mr. Hill was running, the first thing I told him is there's a huge time commitment on the Board of Ed. And, and you know, I know a lot of times you have people coming up complaining or asking for something. I'm going to be asking. I'm not going to be complaining. Oh, good. <laughs> um, but I do realize what you guys go through, so I thank you. Regardless of what side you sit on, I do thank you for the effort because it is a hard one. Um, several weeks ago, I had an opportunity to meet with the high school principal and the athletic director to discuss uh, putting a lacrosse program into the high school. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware. Uh, last year, we started a lacrosse league in the town of Weathersfield um, and had enormous success. So I'm, we had so many kids sign up, we were able to actually join what's called the CVYL, which is the Connecticut Valley Youth Lacrosse League uh, for both boys and girls. And we were one of the first towns in its history, and that league's been around since I was a kid, uh, that was able to field the team in every single division. Uh, so the numbers have been absolutely overwhelming. And so the reason we're here tonight, as you can imagine, is, is and I know I'm scheduled to meet with Superintendent Mike next week, I believe it is. Correct. Uh, to discuss that as well and I wanted to just kind of get this on your radar screen prior to the holidays um, so when you guys go into budget discussions and you start thinking about it that uh, you'll keep this in the back of your pocket uh, as a, point, a little background uh, lacrosse is one of the fastest growing sports in the country uh, in the state of Connecticut alone there's over a hundred high schools that offer the program uh, some of the local high schools, Rocky Hill, Middletown, Cromwell, Berlin, Mi uh, Glassenbury, Windsor, West Hartford, both Hall and Connor, Avon, Simsbury, all of them offer lacrosse programs. And Rocky Hill's been doing it for about five years now. All the other towns are probably in the 20s. Uh, 
and so it has just been an incredible program. We've had just enormous success. Uh, some of my board members came here tonight, and I know they'll ask, like to speak as well. Um, I would just like to say that this year, the meeting we had with the high school principal and the athletic director was a great meeting. And this year, in your budget from the high school, you will see a line item that is pricing out the cost of a lacrosse program. And I would ask that you give it serious consideration and know that there is a huge community of support behind that. And you know, as a league, we will do whatever we can to help that. But at the end of the day, I know you guys have a lot of things to juggle and a lot of decisions to make. I hope you can do it on that behalf as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Ralph D'Amato, 89 Longview Drive. Um, I want to kind of continue Dan's conversation and just kind of, I look at Jack over there having students be involved at different levels and in different programs within a school organization. If you could reflect back on your, whether it was high school or collegiate days, when you have the opportunity to be involved. And sports, as you know, whether it's current sports that are already in place, lend to lessons both in the classroom and outside the classroom in terms of leadership in terms of sportsmanship and in terms of life lessons and time management and other things of that nature. And lacrosse would just be another opportunity to give students that opportunity. I think that lacrosse, as Mr. O'Connor was saying, is a huge growing sport. I think we're actually behind the times in Weathersfield in terms of if you look at schools within your DERG, within your, like your reference groups, they all have lacrosse already. I think that when you look at numbers nationally, both uh, for the boys' programs and the girls' programs, it's it's where it's at in terms of numbers and n interest. I think uh, Dan was talking about the volume of students that are in, that are already playing below the ninth grade level and from kindergarten through eighth grade, and they're they're both on the boys' and girls' side. And I think if we could give the boys' and girls' opportunities to continue, I think they they become competitive within the school as, as scholars, and they would have those skills, like we were talking about the leadership skills, the time management when they left Weathersfield High School. And I think it's one of those things where we could be a more attractive school than we already are, because Weathersfield High School is a great place, and I want to make sure that we keep every student in Weathersfield. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Paul Asola from 32 Hartford Ave. Um, I'm going to continue in the same spirit. Last year, uh, Dan and I got together, and we were lucky to be supported by a number of parents in town that helped us get the program up and running. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a story um, around how I got into it. I am the father of five kids, and uh, three of the boys wanted to play lacrosse, and we had to head to Glastonbury to play. And it was just a mini sticks program and, and they're still young, so they were progressing through. And as I was standing on the sidelines, I was getting a lot of the parents, hey, what are you gonna do in high school when they, when they wanna play? And talking around, I know there is a number of Wethersfield families that actually send their kids to private schools for the very reason of playing lacrosse or um, other athletics. And I'm a big believer in public education and I wanna afford my kids the same opportunity, and that's why I'm here to ask for your consideration in adding the program to the high school um, so I do, wouldn't have to make a choice, which, you know, being a father of five and having a wife that stays home, it's, you know, it's unrealistic for me to do something like that anyways. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, as, as Dan said, it's um, the, the fastest growing sport. If you've ever had a chance to watch it, especially for the boys, it's fun and fast paced along with all sports, I think it builds character and stamina and it helps support, um, you know, uh, not only academics, but leadership and everything else that goes along with organized sports. If you get a chance to watch the girls game, it's filled with kind of grace and grit. Uh, it's quite beautiful to watch. Um, in addition, um, my wife has just started a youth field hockey program in town and she had tremendous success this year and it was in the context of improving the high school program. And 
we want to kind of have this umbrella of Weathersfield sticks. It's uh, you know field hockey sticks in the in the fall and in lacrosse in in the springtime, and there seems to be a, a lot of uh, cross interest in that. I know we just opened registration maybe a week or so ago, um, and we already have a repeat of last year with very promising numbers of being able to field both boys and girls teams at all levels. And the levels are K to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's four levels in each of the boys and girls. Um, we held a free clinic. We got a, a bunch of a new kids uh, to come and try it out and actually sign up. So there's just tremendous support. And when you talk to the parents, um, a lot of folk, one woman I was talking to put in context of, hey, I moved from West Hartford. My kids were sad that they weren't going to be able to play, and now they'll have an opportunity to play in our youth league. Um, I've actually heard colleagues at work say, hey, we considered Weathersfield, but my kids play lacrosse, so we had to go to another town. So I, I do think there's a lot of economic and uh, practical um, application of having a program that puts us competitive with other school divisions. Um, and I just, again, one, thank you for your service, and thank you for your time. And I hope that you guys consider the line item as it comes forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so proactive. Hi, good evening. I'm Giovanna Ehrlich. I live at 12 Hunters Path. I'm a parent in the community as well as one of the parent volunteers who have began this tremendous journey of starting youth lacrosse here in Weathersfield. Um, I just wanted to start off with, according to the National High School Federation of Sports, lacrosse is one of the most emerging sports in the country and it continues to grow at a rapid rate around the country. According to a study between 1997 and 2007, lacrosse grew from 1,048 participants to over participants at the high school level to over 3,068 high schools across the country, and that was just back in 2007, so it's continuing to grow. At that time, in 1997, there was about 45,050 participants and grew to 126,295 participants, again, across the country back in 2007. As far as 1997, that was the year I graduated high school, mm -hmm. I was a former youth high school and college lacrosse player. I continued on to coach at the high school program, volunteered to become a U.S. Uh, Mid-Atlantic volunteer coach for the uh, national school girls tournament. So I've seen lacrosse at all different levels of play. It's a tremendous sport. And with that being said, it has a tremendous growth model to it. Um, lacrosse focuses on a growth model that allowed me to set many goals for myself, track my learning, collaborate with my teammates to discuss team tactics and game play. These 21st century skills that I learned back in high school as a lacrosse player has helped me accept constructive feedback, leadership, and communication skills that is vital for me in society today. It has also led me to continue to coach, continue to be a leader as an educator in the classroom, in the community, and these are just skills that are vital in our world and a lot of kids lack because we are so technologically savvy that way we talk to each other is via text messaging as a health educator I continue to use that as one of my reasons why we need to get out there and have more opportunities for kids to engage in genuine authentic conversations with each other and learn how to communicate and work together collaboratively as a group <laughs> lastly Lacrosse at the high school level will open up many more windows of opportunities for students to participate in an extracurricular team activity. Each team will have about a minimum of 20 players with a opportunity to become leaders, make positive choices. You know where your children will be after school on Friday nights before Saturday games. It will also create meaningful relationships with peers as well. And as being said before, with that growth model, we as this community members of our lacrosse board have continued to start that growth. We're actively seeking out parent volunteers. We're continuing those authentic conversations with parents, getting their feedback, looking for recommendations, and continuing to try to grow this sport in the town of Weathersfield. We have a tremendous athletic talent in our town. We have a large pool of communities to pool with throughout our neighborhoods, and I think it's just such a great opportunity for us to speak tonight, 
to advocate our program that we have that we've started and hoping that you would consider discussing it further on for next year. <coughs> Thank you so much in giving me the chance to speak. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? That was great. Thank you for being so proactive too, as parents. Hey, Mr. Emmett, do you have any communication to share? I do. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Uh, a few updates for you. Uh, I am pleased to say that we are at the substantial completion uh, state of the uh, renovation of Weathersfield High School. Um, crews are now buttoning up the punch list items and detail work uh, in the most recently completed phases of the project. Uh, this includes the installation of technology, uh, permanent uh, projectors uh, in the classroom space and uh, completion of the tech ed area, including transportation and uh, manufacturing. Uh, I will be telling you uh, in upcoming updates and uh, letting the public know that we are in the early planning stages of an open house uh, slash ribbon cutting ceremony uh, in the latter part of January. We'll have additional information for you on that. Um, we're trying to figure out when the plaque will arrive. Um, the plaque was agreed upon at uh, the most recent building committee meeting and it has a window of about eight to ten weeks. We'd like to be able to do everything at once. So uh, end of January is the tentative date. We'll certainly get that out. Um, the idea at this point in time, folks, is that that would be held on a Sunday afternoon um, and would uh, involve the entire community and invited dignitaries. So we're certainly going to do it upright. Uh, last Thursday marked the annual superintendent's award ceremony um, held at uh, Weathersfield High School. Uh, I must say it is one of my favorite events, um, and I go to a lot of them over the course of the year. It's an opportunity to honor, um, uh, and, and, and certainly it's a privilege to recognize our students, our parents, and our support staff members who contribute positively to our school uh, community, demonstrate leadership, and strive to help others. The uh, annual Weathersfield Newington football game will take place tomorrow at 6 p.m. Uh, it is an away game, so it's over in Newington. Uh, bundle up. Uh, game will wrap up what uh, has been a very successful fall sports season for the students. Um, as the parents mentioned, uh, the benefit of uh, sports. <laughs> we had over one third of our um, student population participate in a fall sport. So uh, sports definitely play a positive uh, part uh, for our students. Uh, winter sports season will be starting very soon. Uh, for schedule information uh, regarding our winter sports uh, for Weathersfield, you can visit ciacsports.com. Uh, uh, just to let everyone know, the district will operate on a minimum day schedule tomorrow in, in advance of the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, district offices will be closed on uh, Thanksgiving Day as well as Friday. And last but not least, I would certainly like to wish our Weathersfield students parents and staff members a very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. And moving on to our action items. Janet, could you please read <coughs> motion 6A for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education cancel their regularly scheduled meeting for Tuesday, December 27, 2016. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstention? <clears throat> that 6A motion passes. Elaine, would you please read motion 6B for us? Um, uh, move that the Westfield Board of Education approve the WHS pre-calculus curriculum for grades 11 and 12. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. Kevin, please read motion 6C. Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the Weathersfield High School Geometry Curriculum for grade 10. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6C passes. And John Morris, would you read motion 6D for us, please? 
Move that the Wethersfield Board of Education approve the new course Electronic Music 1 for grades 9 to 12 and deletion of course Jazz Lab, dot, dot. <laughs> Is there any discussion? I'd just like to say that um, this class, um, I've talked to Mr. Dion um, about uh, as he was developing the curriculum for this, and this class offers, um, in addition with you know audio engineering in general, offers a great way for students to combine science and music, and um, it's one of my interests personally, and I think it'll be really uh, interesting to see as a class at Weathersfield. We, you know, we just went through these motions very quickly, but we did have a lot of discussion about it at Student Program and Services. And um, Mr. Rio mm -hmm. came yeah. and gave us a presentation on this. It's fascinating. Yeah. Great. It'll be, it'll be great to uh, have it as a class. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 60 passes. Okay, we'll move on to our um, board of meetings that were held. And we had a special board of ed meeting on 11-1-16. And this is when our whole board got together in a less formal format to discuss first an evaluation of our first year working together. And the comments were direct and honest with thoughtful comments to guide us as a group going forward. Also, the board engaged in a general discussion of strategic goals to guide our decision making for our school system now and for the future. A decision was made to create a strategic planning committee, and that committee will be meeting soon. And last, Mr. Emmett spoke of his proposed three goals for this school year. He is presently working on them to be presented to us in the very near future. And these goals, I believe, focus on academics, problem solving, and civics. Um, policy and planning for the two dates of 11-2-16 and 11-16-15. Polly? Uh, I believe that, um, I, that at the last meeting, um, we, I reported on um, the November 2nd. However, um, just so that you're updated, uh, what we did do um, at that meeting was go over the uh, review the 4000 series. We began review of the um, mandatory policies. And um, uh, actually, in last week's meeting, we picked up the um, uh, the completion of that of the review of that area. Uh, we were, it was great to have the um, input of uh, uh, Mr. Donahue, our new uh, HR director, a, um, uh, but there were a lot of, uh, a lot of items that uh, have, where the statu statutes have changed. Uh, we are also, as uh, last week, we also began the review of the um, 5000 series and um, uh, have reviewed the, the mandatory policies. Uh, the 3000 should be coming to you um, within Certain, I would hope so. Hope by the end of uh, by the meeting in January. Yeah, yeah. I can certainly add uh, to the status of where we're at. The 3000 series um, is residing at CABE at this point in time. The 4000 mandatory policies have been marked up and are in the mail ready to go. And then I'm working on the 5000 series right now. With the process of CABE, what we do is we do red lines and we make sure that we mark <clears throat> up one set to go to CAVE for, uh, for typing. So we are well on our way. At this point in time, we've yet to receive from CAVE the uh, Model 6000 series. So we're in the process of getting ourselves caught up. And as you know, and I know, Elaine, you were the former chair of the committee. We've been at this for years. It's been a long and, and long and tedious process. Yeah, and we've gone through the bylaws. We've gone through the zeros. We've gone through the ones. We've gone through the twos. We've gone through the threes completely. What we will need to do is to go back as a committee after we uh, approve the mandated fours and fives, we will need to go back through the fours and fives to each individual policy to see what, what fits for the district. So it is a long process. Uh, just to share on that point, Mike, I think that's a, a kind of a wise approach because knowing how big each set of policies is, at least if we get them mandated on the books, because when we had Shipman and Goodman, I think Polly will remember this, 
they did a lot of the mandated ones, but then we had problems with school funding and individual things that our mm -hmm. district needed. So <coughs> it's best to have the mandated like you're approaching probably and then go back and fill in the gaps and what we as Westview want. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that's right. a good approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get okay. something done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. It takes it's, so forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Holly, thank you. Um, shared Services Committee, this meeting was held in the Town Manager's Conference Room with both Town Council members and Board of Ed members. The discussion started with a report on how the combined IT services were working. The report was most favorable with future work to be done. And the committee continues to investigate combining the Town Maintenance and the Town School Maintenance Departments. The committee received information on the personnel in each department and their services, and it was noted that Rocky Hill has had one maintenance group and that this should be investigated to how they have it set up and it works. Okay, and then we have WEC. Kevin? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was uh, happy to uh, join the chair at the WEC meeting uh, this past week at the library. Um, Kim Bobbin was able to introduce herself as the new uh, coordinator in town in her new position, uh, which was very exciting for her. Um, she mentioned that they're still working on their website, which will end up being a central deposit repository for um, all the um, uh, different uh, activities and meetings for both uh, kids uh, and parents throughout the town. Um, and she shared with us um, some new data on ELL and pre-K uh, numbers and the trend lines for where they're going. Um, and at the end, we had a little group discussion on WEC and uh, their initiatives who, uh, that they'll be looking at for the next, uh, uh, actually, we'd say in the near future. Good, thank you. Okay, and School Projects Building Committee, Mr. Emmett. Yes, attended that meeting uh, on the 14th. Uh, we went through uh, owner's expenditures, uh, change orders. Um, we did uh, see a rendition of the plaque. Um, we had a report both from ONG Industries as well as um, the architect uh, filling in for um, Rusty Malik. At this point in time, again, a lot of punch list items. Uh, one of the other aspects that we're still looking at is epoxy uh, coating on the locker room floors uh, in a locker room space. And um, also out there is the issue of roof screening. Uh, the units, the HVAC units have been painted. Um, they uh, do match the uh, metal facade. Uh, they look a lot better than they did. So um, at this point in time, that's some, uh, an issue that the building committee is still addressing. Okay, thank you. And Student Program and Services Committee, Elaine? Um, we had quite a discussion, and it was a very, very productive evening um, because all board members were really actively engaged in what we were learning. We learned that the middle school um, has a study skills uh, class they, where the children learn note taking and different styles of note taking and that they can take with them to the high school whichever style learning of uh, taking notes works for them. And it was uh, nice to hear that we have started to teach note taking. I think most of us on the board just learned on our own. Uh, second, we heard from pre-calculus curriculum. They, they want a new pre-calculus curriculum. And uh, the curriculum identifies different expectations for different levels of pre-calculus courses. And that's a nice added addition because maybe a student who would not take pre-calculus will take it because it's level, uh, it's not level, but it's differentiated. I was intrigued with the interactive notebook that the two teachers share with their ki uh, with their classes, and it actually engages the kids in a, a hands-on kind of movement to, to measure maybe the circumference of a circle and write in their notebook. So then, when they need to know that, they go right back to it. It's like a, a recipe book for them in math. Um, the geometry program has some revisions. It's um, got a five-year plan to it. Uh, the, the other that was very fascinating to me was the SAT practice. Um, the math department has an SAT action plan where they identify maybe because now they have block scheduling at the beginning of a class, every class maybe, uh, you might take an SAT-like question. 
this teacher might start with, instead of, okay, we have to do geometry, now we have 45 minutes, that's all we can talk about. Now they can, with the long, longer class size, they can say, we're gonna start with a SAT-like question, and everybody try to answer it in their way, and um, let's see what the problem solving share ways of solving that problem are. And many, to share different kinds of strategies to solve problems is a great learning experience. At least that's what I found when I did that. And sharing how you did, oh, you drew a picture. Oh, you, you could do all that math, you know? And it was, it was great to hear the kids share their thoughts. So um, they wanna continue to work on their professional development time to focus on SAT skills. Um, the new music curriculum, oh, is wonderful. And we are so fortunate that the renovation at WHS has a recording studio and a classroom with enough keyboards and computers to support this program. It is an outstanding program taught by two outstanding educators, Mr. Rio and Mr. Dion, is that correct, Jack? <laughs> um, and I just, am, I get chills when I think of that school being able to offer that to those kids today. It's uh, so, so in, so much in that class that not only just the music, and if you want to take it just because you're interested in music, that's okay too with those teachers. But if you want to take it and you want to, you know, the computer actually puts up in front of you what note you, you hit right in front of you, you know? If you want to make do, re, mi, out comes do, re, mi. I mean, you know, it, it, it's fabulous for the kids. And I'm so proud that this town put that in the renovation and didn't cut it. And that's basically, the student services program. Wait, there was a lot. There was a lot in student oh, program and oh, services. Always have a lot, there, but a lot of good stuff. Great, thank for you. The kids. Thank you. <laughs> um, Correct Council met on November sixteenth um, at their Correct headquarters. We had a, a presentation from Peter Smith of Rome Smith and Lutz, who provided us with a legislative update and discussed the status of the state's budget deficit. Um, next budget will be a challenge for all school systems. The council also discussed their 2017-18 and 2018-19 CREC school calendar as surrounding town school systems utilize the CREC calendars for their own. And there was an invitation to boards and superintendents to attend a legislative breakfast held in January, which gave both sides the opportunity to discuss the state of education in Connecticut um, and Mr. Emmett, I believe you and I have that date on our calendar. We certainly do. And last, we have our Finance and Information Management Committee. Polly? Okay. How was um, today? We just met this evening. Um, there are, were um, several items. Number one um, is that uh, at the present time, the budget is running about um, $255,000 over plan. So uh, we've, had some, uh, uh, we've had some expenses that, um, as, as you're aware, uh, special ed is always a moving target. Uh, we may be very well looking at a reduction in funding. On that from the state, the uh, magnet tuition at this, magnet school tuition at this point, um, it depends on the total number of uh, students we ultimately uh, have in, uh, who are involved with that program. We've had some uh, uh, increases in the, um, in the uh, benefits line because of the fact that there has been, um, the HSA has been very popular with, the, um, with teachers. We've had uh, an increased migration of teachers over to that plan which we have, which initially costs us uh, funding. Uh, we've also had an increased number of retirees which, uh, who have reached uh, Medicare age, so we, uh, we have some uh, contribution that we have to make there. Um, and the other big one is the increase of energy costs. Um, we're at this point about $40,000 over budget for um, uh, about 30 plus of that is um, attributed to the high school and uh, the, the rest of it uh, to the other schools that have kind of carried the burden of the high school while it was uh, out of, com or, well, well, parts of it were out of commission. <laughs> so that's where we stand right now. Um, we are, uh, 
We are expecting that um, the annual audit, which is conducted um, <coughs> by the by Blum Shapiro, uh, f and includes the we're part of the audit that the town uh, has on a on an annual basis. At this point, uh, Blum Shapiro, from what I understand, is uh, preparing a draft. Uh, we should probably hear in uh, what their final. Uh, recommendations are and what they found probably in January but at this point it does not look like the, um, there are any issues as far as the board is concerned and as a matter of fact we've uh, addressed several issues that were brought up in the management letter last year um, so that is pretty much what we've uh, those were the highlights of our discussion tonight we will meet again in December Thank you, Polly. Uh, yes. When you start with uh, a minus 255,000 that you're saying that we might be, that's not firm, but it's, it's somewhat, where will we get that 255,000? Uh, at this particular point, um, it, obviously it's a concern because we're halfway through yeah. the year. Um, some of those, those numbers are moving numbers it depends on where we end up as far as special ed is concerned uh, that we could have um, students leave the uh, oh, leave okay. the district or come back mm -hmm. same way with the magnet schools we have one we have a number of uh, I think it's around a hundred that are now enrolled in magnet schools um, and we could end up with more or or not uh, that that has to be uh, established and um, the other thing that is, is still a, um, that could put us in a better uh, financial situation would be um, the, uh, resolving the issue of the MBR, which is okay. the minimum budget okay, requirement. Yeah. And uh, the town has until the end of, or until January 1st oh. to respond to the state about that. That, as you know, is um, money that uh, the town owes Mm -hmm. uh, the board because of additional uh, funding that mm -hmm. the town received uh, we should hopefully have a little bit more to tell you about that uh, next month okay, once thanks. we that's been resolved <laughs> and then bake sales yeah <laughs> <Car wash. laughs> we're gonna have the band like do, that, <laughs> do <laughs> some <laughs> stuff for us <laughs> because uh, they, the band do pretty good yeah they, they do a really good job <laughs> Okay, thank you, Polly. Okay, so we have meetings scheduled, two school project building committees, um, uh, 1128 and 1212, uh, finance and information management committee meeting on 1213, and a special board of education meeting, um, which is a retreat on 1214. And Madam Chair, I also want to make sure that we're aware that on the 13th of December, that is our regularly scheduled board meeting. Uh, for okay. December that'll take place at 7 p.m. We wanted to make sure that we put the uh, retreat on there that retreat actually uh, will have uh, Lyle Kurtman working with us on that evening so Good. Okay, all right, we're gonna move on to any unfinished business Well, I have some um, We did ask Markham advisory group for an amended report um, as it is good practice to review personnel in the business office when there is an administrative turnover so I would like to read to you their findings please be patient and keep my voice going the result of the analysis and this is the quote from the report indicates that the former assistant superintendent received an overpayment totaling six thousand two hundred ninety six dollars and forty two cents gross salary during his nearly five-year tenure the overpayment appears to have occurred as a result of a miscalculation in his final paycheck by payroll. There is no evidence to indicate the miscalculation was deliberate or fraudulent. Rather, it appears to have stemmed from a miscalculation due to accruals from the pre prior school year. We also note that the assistant superintendent received payments totaling $4,400 over the same time frame for mileage reimbursements in school year 2010-2011 and 2011-2012. These amounts appear consistent with existing Board of Ed policy and as provided in the available contracts, but supporting documentation was not available. We note that employee records for this time period are incomplete given the passage of time 
and document retention policy. We note that mileage reimbursement in excess of these annual amounts was provided for explicitly in this employee's contract for years subsequent to 2011 and 12 and was in the contracts of the other employees during the noted time period. Continuing, our analysis also indicated that the former business manager received a total overpayment of $9,638.98 during his four-year tenure. The primary sources of the overpayments appear to be the result of several miscalculations involving unused vacation time, annual salary converted to per diem, and a number of eligible days worked. This individual was previously informed of the overpayment and has made restitution to the district. And that's the um, words from Markham. The former assistant superintendent has recently been notified. This report as amended is available at the business office at the Stillman building. And further information, Markham has been paid $4,000. There is no final invoice but the agreement is not to exceed $10,000, and that does include this amended report. There was no extra for this. I do want to read the forensic report conclusion from Markham, which did not change. Based upon the information that we have reviewed and interviews with Board of Ed personnel, we have not found any information that identifies suspicious fraudulent or inappropriate activity concerning the payroll records of the Board of Ed. At this juncture, we recommend additional monitoring to continue internally on an ongoing basis. And new policies and procedures are in place so that this cannot happen again. And the board, the administration, we're all moving forward with financial security. Any discussion or comments on this unfinished business? Okay. Then we'll move on. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that there is a five minute limit. Okay. Are there any board comments tonight? Elaine? Um, I had the opportunity to go to the Veterans Day um, celebration held in front of Town Hall with Polly Moon and with uh, Bobby Granado. And if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. But um, and I have to say again, Jack, what a wonderful job that band did. They came out on a day they could have <laughs> off, and it wasn't warm and sunny but it was a bit chilly and and they played and they were so proud to play and they were so proudly stood there in their new uniforms they just looked dashing and they played without any um hesitation and and like they were glad and respectful of the event and that band i don't get to go see them as much as i'd like to see at the halftime show because i'm it always comes on a cold night when i want to go but anyway <laughs> and i've sat my share of cold nights in that football field but I do watch Mrs. Vassell's tapes <laughs> and they are they are better than my college band ever was and I just have to say that they, I'm just so proud of all those boys and girls and he has so many they do a wonderful job and that Veterans Day was a tribute to them and of course our veterans and, and I agree and um Janet Vassell is wonderful about putting them on Facebook so I do I do watch them on Facebook a lot it's great any other board comments, John? Yes. Um, I had a discussion with the superintendent about getting a facilities and maintenance committee meeting together. And uh, we're just trying to wait until we get a, a report in, and we're hopeful that it's going to be mid-December. Um, but I know we've got a lot going on, so we're going to try to squeeze it in uh, the week before our board meeting. That's the first thing. And uh, other than that, um, I look forward to that retreat on the 14th. <laughs> <laughs> he already sent a note around <laughs> saying how excited he was. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Any other board comments? Thanks, Kevin. <laughs>
Um, I just kind of wanted to echo a lot of the comments that the parents had today regarding the lacrosse program at the high school. Um, it's, you know, growing up in town, it, we, we didn't have it at the high school. Uh, we didn't even have a youth league. Um, so it's, it really is new to me, and I'm sure it's new to a lot of people here. Um, but at the same time, I feel it's important to expose our students and our kids to as many sports and activities mm -hmm. as possible. You know, we're fortunate enough to have excellent athletes here. We are state champions and league champions in a lot of different sports. Um, but the more, the more sports that we can expose these kids to, the better. Obviously, we're going to have some. It's going to be a tight budget year, as it always is. Um, you know, and that's something we really need to think about. But um, it, you know, if I had a magic wand, you know, we'd have a boathouse and a crew team. But I understand how <laughs> this works. But um, but you know. You know, the passion that these parents had, uh, they've really started from the bottom up. We have a very successful youth league. It's something I think we should consider as we move forward. It's a great model they've worked on. I agree. Anyone else for comments? Polly. Uh, I, I just would like to echo um, Kevin's comments. And uh, I think um, I was really pleased to see the parents here. And uh, um, I have... Um, for many years have known um, especially Mr. O'Connor and uh, considering other projects that he's worked on over the years I have complete faith in uh, in their um, organization and in their ability to uh, move things along so um, it, one of the things that we are going to I was glad they came at the time they did because uh, one of the things that we are thinking about is uh, getting the conversation started about next year's budget and uh, it's a wonderful time to hear from parents. And, uh, and it's also great that we've got a, a very strong group of people who are going through the channels of meeting with uh, Mr. Maltesi, Mr. Moore, and um, with Mr. Emmett. And um, as, as Kevin mentioned, we are going to have, some, have a lot of budget issues. You heard um, my committee's report, and uh, so it's going to be a challenge. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention was um, I was really pleased on Election Day um, as I went to different polling places and also um, uh, was, was involved in the, the process during the day to see the number of, um, of kids who were involved um, uh, working for Republican and Democratic uh, uh, candidates. Um, again, that was a day that um, they had the day off and they were out and they were standing at the polls or they were um, uh, helping out one way or the other, getting each other coffee and uh, um, basically in support and many of them also making phone calls. And uh, I, yeah, I, I just was very impressed to see that, that um, uh, uh, Weathersfield is, is uh, starting to bring up a whole um, crop of, of kids who are very interested in the political process and, and the civics. Um, the other last thing that I just wanted to mention, I wanted to give a shout out to the uh, Friends of the Library because they had their um, one of their bigger book sales in November and they made over $9,000, which is huge. <laughs> so I just was very, and uh, so we, um, I, I thought that they deserve a little recommendation yes. for that. Yeah, maybe we can uh, we'll use them. <laughs> get them involved for us, too. Thank you. Anyone else for board comments? <clears throat> then, Jack, we want to know what life is like uh, at the high school. So, yeah, um, fall sports are winding down. Um, winter sports will be starting up soon. Uh, like Mr. Emmett said, there's a football game tomorrow um, evening at Newington. Um, the band will be playing. Uh, it should be fun. It's always these are these football games are always fun between Newington and us. Um, our Miles for Mercy walk that the National Honor Society uh, organized went well. It was a few weeks ago, September uh, not September, <laughs> October thirtieth. Um, we raised some money for the Mercy House in Hart uh, in Hartford, and it was it was a great event to see people out on the track helping out. And finally, homecoming last Friday went well. All the students I talked to enjoyed it. Um, and it's definitely an event that everyone looks forward to every year. Great. Thank you, Jack. 
Okay, before I may have a motion to adjourn this meeting, I would just like to wish the board a very happy Thanksgiving and everyone out there. Um, we do have a lot to be thankful for, so have a wonderful time with your family and friends. So may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you and good night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>